I'm Lee Morrison and welcome back to Bespoke Addict YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be removing the polish from this um, old pair of Barker shoes. Um, I'm just going to be using uh, methylated spirit and, and cotton wool as a solvent and I do, I do have a series of um, micro screwdrivers um, with all different types of heads. I've got a whole set of them here, um, there's, a, there's quite a few in there, maybe 25. They're all different sizes and shapes. It's very important to very important to select the shape that you're going to be needing. What I'm using the screwdriver for, so the the the, the solvent it works on the surface, but it doesn't dig down into the holes, um, the holes in the broguing and the uh, the medallion. So I've chosen a screwdriver that fits very carefully into the hole. I've got another one which is much smaller, fits the smaller holes. So literally just with very careful pressure. With the with the solvent applied on the on the on the uh, cotton wool, I'm just going to be just use it to fish around. I'm not sort of gouging, you know, just literally just light finger pressure, just just sort of roll it around, and you wipe off any excess. Um, it takes quite a time. Some of the some of the holes have sort of almost disappeared. They've got the the polish has built up and sunken into the holes, and it's, it's slowly become smooth. Like there's one, two, three, or four holes here, and um, you can barely see. So they will um, they will clean up beautifully. Um, just with the simple tool. It's not an expensive tool. I think it was a pound from a, a pound shop. Um, you don't need an engineer's quality. You know, we're not putting any any pressure. Just uh, it's the size we're after, not the particular quality of tool. So um, I will be needing some gloves, um, possibly ideally glasses as well, safety glasses. But um, I'm going to try not to splash it into my eyes. But um, it might be advisable to wear, you know, like a, um, a, a set of lab glasses. You don't really want this in your eyes. So it's just going to be uh, methylated spirit, cotton wool and my screwdrivers. I'm going to be stripping this. Oh, I've, I've also got um, just a it's, a, it's an old food carton just to just to throw the discarded cotton wool into. I have made the mistake of dropping one on my table before and it's, it's taken the varnish off. So be very, very careful. It is a solvent. Put the waste in a, in a tub on a plate, whatever. So I'm just going to take take some of the methylated spirit. Um, I'm going to be very careful not to get any drips onto my varnish here. It does, it does remove varnish as well as uh, shoe polish. Um, just wet the cotton wool and uh, you just literally wipe away. Um, it's not a scrubbing motion, it's I'm just trying to dissolve any any surface polish, any any contaminants that are on there. It does take time. There's not there's not very much on this pair of shoes because I, I do this um, quite regularly. Um, you know, the, it, it's very important if you're going to be moisturising a pair of shoes to actually do this bit first. Remove the old polish. Polish not only does it add a cosmetic sheen, it acts as a barrier. You know, to stop any 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 light moisture, raindrops, that sort of thing. Say if you were to spill a drink. If you were, you know, maybe spill a little bit of wine, it should just sort of bounce off the polish. Um, but if there's no, if there's, a, if there is polish on the skin, the moisturising treatment doesn't tend to work either. If you're trying to moisturise the skins before polishing them, that tends to bounce off. So you do need to remove the polish quite frequently. And uh, this takes time. It might take me on this pair. Probably, actually, it might only take 15 or 20 minutes um, to do the pair. Um, there's not a great deal of polish on this shoe because I've done it so often but I have bought old shoes that are maybe 40 50 years old and um, they've been polished and polished and polished over the years and never been stripped once and um, it's like um, it's like thick varnish it's, um, it's quite unbelievable and the polish itself really cracks and particularly on the areas where the shoe flexes and it looks like the leather itself is horrendously cracked and in more cases than not, the, um, once the polish is stripped away, the leather underneath is in gorgeous condition and uh, might only have just the minor cracks, very minor cracks. I bought a beautiful pair not so long ago that were advertised as being extremely cracked and I was confident it was just the polish that was cracked. When I removed the polish, the skins were in beautiful condition underneath. And um, I'll probably do a video at some point showing that pair of shoes, in fact, and I'm um, just working away. The, you can see the, it's not, there doesn't appear to be very much on the cotton wool because it's a pale colour. And if this were brown or black, I'd be, it'd be really building up on this cotton wool and I'd be constantly throwing it away and changing it. So just rubbing away, rubbing away. Uh, 
the first the first um, application sort of softens the surface. It does dry quite quickly, so you have to keep keep reapplying. But it doesn't come off in one go. You know, I've just done this, and the surface has been softened slightly. And I just keep, and I can feel it. It, it kind of starts to drag. It softens, and then it, you can feel you feel the cotton wool starts to drag. And that's as it's pulling off the the residue of the old polish. Um, so yeah, you do this more as much by feel as uh, as by vision. You can't see through the wet the wet surface there. But um, it's uh, it is a solvent. It's not great for the skin, um, but skin's uh, remarkable stuff. It survives all sorts of uh, abuse. I always consider to myself, you know, what would have happened to a shoe. Well, not the shoe, but the leather skin before it was made into a shoe. What you know, what happened to it in the tanning process, and that is absolutely brutal process. Um, the skin's already been through some horrors, and uh, it's still flexible. It's still lovely. This might make them a little bit dry, but if we remove the surface of the of the, the shine and the polish, we can get to that surface and uh, treat it with moisturiser. If we don't remove the sheen surface, the moisturiser won't sink in. Um, we can't really treat the skin. I'm going to change that now, put it in my little pot, go for a fresh bit. Being very careful not to spill any drips on my varnish. Don't want to upset the varnish on my table here. It's just, just a case of keep going, rubbing and rubbing. So it's it's going to take several minutes per shoe, but um, because they're quite a modern shoe, as I say, I've, I've treated them many times. I probably I've probably stripped these back ten times in the six or seven years that I've owned them. Um, yeah, just remove the uh, remove the polish, start again. So you can see there's a there's a minor minor cut there. It when I wet it, it goes quite dark. Um, once the polish is removed, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to come back and get that cut out with abrasive paper. But that'll be a totally separate video. This video is purely purely polish removal. Um, I'm actually only going to do one shoe. Um, I want to keep the other shoe in its original state so that we can do the whole treatment and then compare the two shoes side by side um, purely for you know, comparison purposes. And I'll uh, off camera, I will uh, come back and treat that shoe separately. But, uh, it's quite stubborn. There we go. I'm getting through now. A bit more, a bit more elbow grease. Um, yeah, just keep rubbing. It's um, when it's got the polish on there. You, when it's wet, it's very shiny. But as the polish disappears, when it's wet, the sheen's no longer there. I've got I've got a very matte finish just here, but this there is still quite shiny. So there's obviously still some clear polish there. So let's keep rubbing. <clears throat> so if I don't get all the polish off, the treatments I'm going to give the shoes, the it's going to be, I'm going to be steaming the shoe uh, through a wet towel um, to shrink the skin, get rid of all this, all this floppy bagginess, all the bagginess down here. It will all be shrunken away. But uh, if I don't remove the, uh, I need the moisture from the steam to go straight into the skin. I don't want it sort of bouncing off the polish, but the polish will actually melt under the extreme heat and it, it, would, it would leave a bit of a mess. Your know, melted polish would then go into like cracked lumps. So it's really important to get it all off. I'll just keep going. Um, yeah, so that, you know, after, this, after this stripping process, like I say there'll be a separate video showing the uh, showing the shrinking process, which does appear extremely brutal. But um, these have been shrunken at least once, possibly twice before. This is probably, I think, maybe the third time I've done them. But, you know, skin does stretch with wear. It stretches. And uh, it, it, as do the, the seats on your car. They, you know, on an old car, if you've got leather seats, they tend to, you know, it, it stretches and it goes, um, it goes baggy, you know. And uh, I actually learned to sort of um, to shrink the leather by shrinking the seats on my old vintage Jaguars. I've, I've collected Jaguars as well as shoes for many, many years. And uh, the upholstery does get rather neglected. So, yeah, I learned many of my leather working tricks many, many years ago on my old cars and uh, applied the same to shoes. It works extremely well. 
Yeah, we're, we're close to being completely clear on the cap. Um, it's more obvious if the shoe's darker, to be honest with you. You know, if, it, if it's brown or black, maybe even red, who knows. But, uh, now, when this shoe dries, it'll have a, a very grey, dull, won't look uh, very attractive. But at least we'll be able to see exactly where we are the skin, exactly what uh, areas of the skin need treating, that need the cracks and the scratches removing. And if we've got any, if I've missed any of the areas of, um, of polish, they will still, still be slightly shiny amongst all the mottled grey. So let me just keep going. I've been probably been going six or seven minutes now, but uh, it does take time. On a really, really old pair where I've bought uh, shoes from the 1920s and 1930s, polish in those days was more like a bitumen. Um, and it, it, it's ever so strange as you're rubbing it, say if you're rubbing the black, and it comes off almost like a like a green type of colour on the on the pad and it really does take an age because it's kind of a, a bitumen it goes hard and very flaky very dry it has to be removed you can't polish over that dried surface it just all you're doing is polishing the polish you're not polishing the the shoe beneath and um, if it's cracked it, you know more the more polish you apply it just highlights those cracks all the more so it's very very important to just to be brave bite the bullet and give it this treatment I'm giving it. Occasionally, methylated spirit isn't quite up to the job. It just isn't abrasive enough, harsh enough. Um, yeah, I have used uh, nail varnish remover. I don't recommend that you do so, only in desperate situations where nothing else is, is working, but it is possible to use like an acetone-based nail varnish remover. Um, cellulose paint thinners. Once again, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't use that for just removing regular polish, but say if you've got severe stains on the shoe that need to come out, or if the shoe's extremely old, say more than 50 or 60 years old, and it's got a, a different, I'm gonna use a different pad now, if it's got a different type of polish on it um, that we know as a modern polish, if it's different to that, it often doesn't uh, dissolve under the methylated spirit. So you do have to use more abrasive techniques, more, much harsher solvents, but that's quite rare. But uh, I'll probably, in fact, I definitely have two or three extremely old 1920s or 1930s bespoke shoes with this polish still in place, and I'll make a separate video. Now, that does take time. It can take 10 or 12 hours to dissolve that polish, um, even with an extremely harsh chemical. The methylated spirit just doesn't really touch it at all. So. All right, we're getting close, but we're still not there. Particularly, I've got to be, pay particular attention to the areas that I really am going to be shrinking a lot, and that's that's under here. That there's going to be less shrinkage around here. This this was already shrunk a long time back, five or six years ago, and it doesn't seem to stretch very much. So I don't need to pay quite so much attention to those areas and this area around here. It's already been shrunken, and it just doesn't seem to stretch back. So not too worried about that. Keep going, let's give this a bit more. Uh, <laughs> a good more bit in the vamp here. Yeah. Because that, that is the area I'm particularly keen to stretch, to shrink, not stretch, I beg your pardon. Stretching's a total opposite uh, technique. And uh, once again, I'll be making separate videos to show that. There are very few of the shoes in my collection that haven't been shrunken with steam or stretched in some way. It might be just a tiny bit, you know, around the, uh, you know, around the knuckle of the toe, or it might be often on very old shoes. They're really, people had smaller feet in those days. They were, they tended to be very, very flat, very narrow. You could buy them quite long, but they were all awfully skinny. Um, shoes from the twenties and thirties were generally rather slim compared with what we know today and I do have a lot of shoes from that period and um, most of them I've had to had to stretch in order to get my feet into but done with care you know the stretching process doesn't destroy the shoe and you can't tell if it's if you if you do it with enough care you can't tell that the stretching process has taken place so um, but uh, if you were going to stretch something you'd still do this what I'm doing now you know remove all polish all residues start with fresh skin and uh, it is quite physical work 
and wearing an old smoking jacket here. I'm actually starting to get quite hot. <laughs> ah. Right. Okay, we're getting close, but we're still not there. It's very important to um, also, the skin does get, get wet while you're doing this, but the solvent dries quickly. Um, but when it gets wet, it has a tendency to possibly shrink. Now, if you've not got tight fitting trees in place, the shoes can really curl up badly. You know, the, 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 the toes will curl up and uh, yeah, they can mis, mis, you know, become very misshapen and deformed. Um, it wouldn't be a total disaster. That would be re revivable with, with moisturizers and a, you would definitely need a tree of the correct shape. You know, a, a tree that's got a really tight fit. Um, it could be revived if, if you did have a shoe that had been so treated. But like I say, do not forget to, to put your trees in. But, uh, I'll discuss the trees and what type of trees to use on the next video when we come to to actually put in the uh, to the steam on the skin. There we go. We're still going, still going. Probably a good ten minutes now, and. Uh, uh, okay, do a bit more around the back. As I say, I'm just very careful not to get any drips of this uh, solvent on my varnish surface there. It will strip it straight off. Like I say, you know, using the solvent like this on the skin, it does leave it a little dry, um, but I don't find it it's a problem. Um, it's a necessary evil. Um, if you want the shoes to to be moisturised afterwards, you've got to you've got to strip away any any barriers. I find that when the when the shoes have been removed of uh, polish, it does take a little bit of moisture out. The, the skin's very thirsty, and it really does suck in the uh, moisturiser. Now, if it's a coloured moisturiser, which I'm going to be using, it also sucks in the colour. It goes deep into the skin because the, the solvents left the skin a little bit thirsty, a bit dry. Um, if the skin's extremely well moisturised, you're using more moisture, it doesn't really absorb, it sits on the surface. It doesn't do any harm. You can never really over moisturise the skin. But um, if you want in the depth and the intensity of colour, you really want the, 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 the moisturiser, the tinted moisturiser to be absorbed and sucked down deep into the skin so you get that lovely depth of shine. Uh, with the amount of uh, solvent I've been using here, these skins are going to be somewhat dry. Not, not catastrophically so, they will revive in a matter of minutes with the correct moisturiser, but they will draw the coloured moisturiser deep into the skin. I won't be, uh, it's very unlikely I'll need to re-dye this shoe. There we go. Oh, we're getting very close now. I think I'll give it one more, one more rub all over, and I'm going to let it dry. And when it dries, it does dry reasonably quickly. I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so. It should be quite dry. When it dries, I'll I'll be able to see any areas of uh, clear, clear polish that have been missed. So uh, whilst it's drying, I'm going to be. Uh, using my little, uh, my little screwdrivers to fish around and um, clear out the broguing. Okay, that's it. Get that in the little pot, put the lid on. Yuck. Now, I must stress, these have got uh, flammable solvent on them. Do not throw them in the bin. Um, if you throw them in the kitchen bin, you know, they need to be out of the property, outside the house. Um, yeah, do not throw them in the kitchen bin. You have flammable fumes within the, within the house. So now I'm just going to use my, I've got two sizes, like I say, there's a removable head there. So I'm going to do the large ones first. Just uh, stir about very carefully. I don't want to be stretching the holes. I just want to stir about, dislodge any, any buildup of cream, any buildup of polish that's in the holes. There's quite a bit down there. And in the edge here, there's quite a bit. Let's get a bit of uh, wipe off the excess. So I'll do all, all the holes. I'm just uh, using very light pressure. I'm just twiddling and twiddling. I'm not, I'm not jabbing and stabbing away. I'm using very, very light pressure. 
it's quite soft now because it's uh, it's had the uh, it's had the solvent sink in there. But obviously, of course, the cotton wool can't get down into the holes. So this does remove very easily once it's had the solvents on there. Okay, let's just change the head. Go for a much much smaller head. I've already, you know, compared the size of the heads to the hole. Um, you know, I've selected very carefully so I don't end up stretching the stretching the holes any 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 any, any way. Um, you have to keep wiping wiping the excess off. It comes off on the screwdriver. But, uh, this is quite important, you know, the, the brogan is part of the uh, beauty of the shoe and it does slowly get hidden by, by layers of polish. Uh, I've had shoes that I bought second hand and I didn't even realise that there was brogan on the skin, there was that much polish over the years. They'd just become completely smooth and these holes are totally full of, <laughs> you know, full of old polish. It was a lovely surprise. To, in fact, it was on an old pair of John Lobbs. They were all broke around here. And when I bought them, I didn't realise there was any broken, any pattern work. And I think the person that sold them to me didn't realise. It was just completely, totally hidden by uh, layer upon layer of old polish. Oof, it makes my skin itch a little bit. This, um, the vapours from this solvent. It's clearly not very good for me, but... Yeah. <laughs> I don't do it every day. Yep. Yeah, give it a bit of a wobble. Bit more solvent. Then we've got a series of little holes along the toe cap here. That's the big one, the little one. I've already done the big ones. So on a bespoke shoe, these, these would all be punched by hand. Um, certainly a huge amount of handwork. On a, on a, a factory made shoe, they, they'll be, there won't be, each one won't be punched by hand, they'll be, They'll be done with some kind of a, a pressing tool. Uh, yeah, it's just a case of patience. The shoe's starting to dry now, but uh, we can't uh, we can't um, continue with the shrinking process until until we know it's dry. And you can see the difference. That's quite dark, and then this is this is really quite light around here. There's a there's a big difference. Um, we've got a dry patch just there and right next to it it's still wet but it's, it's, it is a solvent and it will evaporate rather quickly and uh, it does have the effect of shrinking the skin so do keep the trees in place don't take the trees out when uh, when it's got wet solvent on there on this bit I'm doing this. I'm just doing the small holes I haven't done the big ones yet I'll come back to those and uh, applying very little pressure just just I don't want to be scratching and digging into the skin I'm just trying to fish out the the, the, the polish which has already been softened by the, 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 the solvent we used a few minutes ago right let's, let's, let's do these up here just, I'm only doing every other hole. You know, the, 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 we've got a large one, a small one, large and small. I'm doing all the small ones first. And I will change the tip, go back and do all the large in a, in a few seconds. And that's really full of polish, that hole there. Gosh. All right, last little run. It's just magnetic, it just pops in and out. Very simple tool. Like I say, I, I think I bought this from a pound shop. Um, it's definitely not a, a quality tool, but it's just the size that I was after. And the, 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 all the various pieces 
they have dozens of different sizes and shapes and because uh, you choose the wrong size you're going to stretch these holes but, uh, it's perfectly uh, strong enough to do you're just fishing off a bit of old polish I, I suspect the tool isn't of a quality that you could uh, repair a clock or something it's yeah it's definitely not an engineering quality tool Small one, big one. Here my gloves are okay. After the gloves do deteriorate under the chemical, I'm just uh, very keen to keep the harsh chemicals off my direct skin, and uh, I just buy these latex gloves for the. I'm not sure if the latex or vinyl, I just thought I'd buy them by the box. I get for an awful lot. I always wear them when I'm doing any treatment and uh, any polishing. I don't want my fingers all caked up with uh, shoe polish. Okay. Yeah, that's it. All the, all the holes are done. So it literally is just a case of sitting and waiting now. And uh, the back area is quite dry. I think we've got off most of the polish. Um, this this has had a lot more work with the uh, with the solvent is really quite wet. It's certainly got at least another ten minutes to dry. So at this point, uh, you can clearly see on the camera the difference between the wet and the dry. The wet bits are very dark, and um, you know where the light bits uh, is, is dry. So it's going to take another ten to fifteen minutes. I'm going to switch off the camera at this point, and um, we'll rejoin when we're ready to actually steam shrink this particular shoe. As I say to you, I'm not going to do the, the other shoe straight away, so we will we'll completely strip, shrink, smooth, moisturise and polish this shoe, then we'll compare it with the shoe that's untreated and uh, show the direct contrast. Um, if, this, if this video has been helpful, then please, uh, please give it a thumbs up and uh, it'd be, um, be lovely if you were to follow and uh, subscribe and uh, you'll get all of, the, uh, all of the videos that are going to be up and coming. So next time you see this shoe, it'll be completely dry and we'll be ready for the, um, the shrinking process. I'm Lee Morrison and this is uh, Bespoke Addict, a YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us.